Welcome to the No BS Short-Term Rental Podcast, an unfiltered look into the global vacation and short-term rental industry. I'm Mateo Bradford. And I'm John Stokinger. And this is our podcast. We bring the right people to the table at the right time, giving you an inside view and take on the short-term rental industry like no other podcast can. Morning, Mateo. How are you, man? I'm good, John. How are you? Great season two episode eight it's knocking them down yeah knocking it out it's a interesting week for us uh no guest which is fine because you know we, we hope that the majority of the people are coming to see us and listen to us anyways um but we we got some great things we want to talk about and uh you know I'm, yeah, i like i like these you know i'm, I'm glad we do I, i'm I, i'll be honest john i'm glad we do these you know i'm glad you know we we put these gaps in here where it's just you and i you know, having a conversation, you know, because it does kind of go back to our roots and where we started with this podcast of you and I just having conversations and talking shit, like, and, you know, really looking at things, um, you know, from our lens and sharing, learning, you know, like we always do. I, I think that's the sad part people don't see. I, you know, I wish we, we had like, you know, maybe we'll have to do this at some point, get some like GoPros and like film the whole process of like what we do for this podcast. Because what, I, what I want our listeners to know is they miss a lot of the conversation that happens like pre and post. It is good, it is a good conversation, right. uh, but they don't always, you know, go the direction of where, where we're headed for the day. So it's- uh, Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, for example, we that. just were, we we're just bullshitting for 15 minutes before hit and record. Right. And, and- None of that stuff we talked about is really appropriate for the show. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and but but at the same time, it is. But it's in the future or in a different, uh, you know, right. it's in a future right. rendition or, 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 or through a different lens. Um, the, the exciting, you know, the interesting thing you brought up earlier when we were talking um, actually on a phone call this morning, you talked about uh, someone that you were speaking with asked what the draw is for the no BS, you know, what was, what was the exact words they, they said? Well, they, they were, when they were looking at like, you know, what we bring, what our value is, like what our, what our podcast brings um, in terms of value to its listenership. Uh, and they asked if it was, you know, if it was our dialogue or if it was our guests. Um, and, you know, it was a good question. And I, you know, I really thought about it, but it, it, it kind of comes for a circle. You're right. Like, is it what we're talking about today? It's like, I think it's both, you know, the idea of what we've had um, and what we wanted to create with this podcast was simply current events, culture, people, you know, this side of the story. And it started out with us. And so, right. you know, I, you know we're, we are super blessed. We have lots of great guests coming, you know, but what I didn't want to, to do and what I don't think we want to do either is lose those times where it's just you and I talking too, man. I think, you know, it's, there's, there's value in that and you're doing some amazing things within the industry and continue to do so. I think I'm doing some interesting things within the industry and continue to do so. But, you know, I think with where we're heading um, and I think within our experiences, man, I, at the end of the day, I just like bullshitting with you too. Like this right. is, this is fun. Um, and you know, I want to make sure that we can expand those conversations and uh, yeah, I agree with you, man. I, I think the, if I were on that conversation, someone asked me, my answer is yes. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's the guests, it's us, it's, it's all of it together. And then that's what makes it uh, a special. Um, and I truly, I think it's, it's our rapport and I'm not sitting here patting ourselves on the back here, but our rapport brings mm. out a different response and a comfortableness and in at ease, <laughs> pun intended, um, with with our <laughs> with our guests that yeah. that put them in a position that they're willing to just you know relax and have a great conversation with us. Yeah. Um, and again, this is how it all started. The in the news, uh, you know, more money, more money, <laughs> more money, more money. You know, I, <laughs> it reminds me of this, like the you know. Damon Wayne's in the whole, you know, in living color, mo money, you know, all this kind of back in the day, it's, it's just being thrown and it's, it's insane. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, Saunders announcement, you know, there, if I go and look at, you know, some of these news sites and everyone, you know, 30 million series C 340 million, you know, series F, you know, name the company, 
Yeah, I mean, half of these companies are, you know, I've never, I barely heard of, I don't want to say I've never heard of, but they're like new to the space or they're, they're pivoting into, into this in a way because they realize and they see the opportunity. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's, um, I, the money, when we talk about this, it, it, I feel like it's dots our episodes and we talk about this all the time, but coming into a new year, um, you know, with a year of, we'll say a year and a half going on, two years of of kind of a, you know, a shaken up industry, right? Like, you know, we shake things up and then as things settle, you want to see how they fall. Right. Um, you know, we've seen the shake up, we've seen the numbers. Um, and I, I, I don't know how any, how much clearer it can be that the resources um, financially and otherwise coming into this industry are, are not slowing down. The interest in this industry is not slowing down. And it's good to me, it's going to be interesting to see across the board, you know, you're looking at, you know, these companies like Wanderlust, Wanderlust, I'm sorry, um, just got $30 million in Series C funding. I, right. I can't really see where that goes, right? In, in terms of their, you know, their, you know, out, their build as an outdoor travel technology company. And so like, interesting to see what the glamping sector rate goes and like where all this money in, in urban markets and Sondra going public, all this other stuff. Like my interest is like, I want to press the fast forward button and see how this pans out like everybody else. Uh, Cause it is a lot of money and it's a lot of money that's directly going to our area of travel. And it, it, I want to know, you know, just like the other economists and other people in the world out want to do out there, like what effect is this going to have on our business? Mm-hmm. cultural perspective from you know a you know it, it, even just a who's left in in our business so and again it's but it's like you said I, easy to look at the money and be like that's a lot of money yes it's a lot of money when you look at the amount that's being put in kind of in mass it's amount it's a, a massive amount of money when you look at smaller companies that see 30 million dollars of investment and they're looking to you know raise a million <laughs> right two. Um, and, and they just see this money being thrown. Like we saw it rented, you know, I mean, it was a rented too. We saw it too, like all the money that was being thrown at these entities. And you're just like, what do they see? What, what, what is their vision in this space? That's giving them the, you know, <laughs> the ability, like, what are they looking at? That's throwing, that's like, yeah, we're going to make a $30 million investment. We're going to make a, you know, an $80 million investment. Hell, we're going to make a $5 million, $10 million. Right. Investment. I mean, for example, like any place now, you know, they're, they're a flexible housing marketplace. They're, they've yeah. never, you know, they're expanding the U.S. in 5.3 million. All right. Mm-hmm. It, in the grand scheme of things compared to these major it's it's a drop in the bucket compared to 300 and or 30 million but it's still 5.3 million is a lot of money yeah. and you know and what what does that buy like what like when you're going to go ahead and put 5.3 million we're like what does that mean i'm you know my company is putting 5.3 million into expansion into the us okay mm-hmm. great is that is that sales teams is that acquisitions is that like, what does that mean and and every business has different strategy right. but but what is the rippling effects? Is it positive? Is it a mix? Um, like, how is it affecting, you know, the, our current, like right now, we know for a fact that we don't have the inventory to go ahead and support this. So if this, if a lot of this is going to go to securing more inventory overall for the, for the short-term vacation rental space, mm-hmm. I think it's positive. You know, if it's taking away from others, it could be both. It could be like a hybrid. It's like, it's positive and it's negative, but I think ultimately the, the, the focus on this, where like the eyes on our market, the eyes on our industry and our vertical in general is a positive. And it's in only in overall good things are going to, are going to come of this. Um, And we're at, you know, I don't want, we're not at the beginning. We're not at, we're, but we're nowhere close to the end we're right in the, like the epicenter of some, like some absolutely amazing mind blowing shit mm-hmm. that is like, I can't even fully wrap. Like I talk, we talk to so many smart people all the time, way, way like that, like dive into the numbers way deeper than I, than I do and that you do. And they still don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> you know? Right, 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 right. So I mean, looking at this vast pool of money, man, like, you know, what's new? 
have you seen anything new that's like, you know, I mean, I'm going to look at what Wonderless is doing. You know, they're they're looking at marinas and campgrounds and they're bringing all these other kind of glamping aspects kind of in, in technology. I mean, I see where they're going in kind of organizing you know, the kind of glamping side of the business. And, you know, that seems I, I want to say niche, not niche and necessarily in terms of size and like, oh, it's small, but just niche in terms of the direction in which they're going right. in that space. And I get that. But do we see anything new? Have you heard of anything new? Have you seen anything new? Like even with the even with the Sonder raises and, and what's new? Right. All right. Now, all these companies that have been talking about going public are going public. But what's new? Right. right. Yeah, I don't. Have you seen anything that's? I mean, I, I think it's just how how they're going about it. If you look at Asander and and what mm -hmm. they're doing, and they're you know, I don't think what they're doing is new. I think they perfected something that you know that a lot of a lot of companies had trouble with. And obviously, we know a few years you know at the beginning of COVID, many companies kind of fell out that kind of started on that model, mm -hmm. and then every, th those that pivoted, those that that saw the writing on the wall early, made some changes. You know, like Saunders is a great example of a, of a company that is is growing and expanding and in in realizing that if they strike now, they're going to go ahead and 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 do it right. You know, because they had a solid foundation. It's the companies that didn't necessarily have a solid foundation and didn't have the ability to go ahead and springboard on and jump on an opportunity. Um, those are the ones that are maybe left behind or are playing catch up now. Um, you know, but like I. I don't necessarily think they're doing anything new. I just think they're working smarter. Um, but I mean, with Sonder, like it, even with Sonder, like, I, I, and again, I get this is, and I guess I want to definitely get more into that. Like at some point, you know, looking at is, did they do it better or did they just get more money? And I guess they did it better because they're still around. I, I'll, I'll give them that. But what does that mean? Right. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Was it, did they do better because of advisement? Like, are they performing better? Like, you know, are they, you know, did they figure it out? Because their model was huge and clunky. And when last time I looked at it, it was very supply chain dependent <laughs> in terms of they, by, you know, how they worked, bought furniture, well, did all those other things. And like, now you look at this, a global crisis, you order furniture. I couldn't get furniture in my house, any of my houses for four months. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, those, so, those, so, so, those are, so those are things I want to, I want to know more well, about. I, I, I think, I, I think that's a conversation for, you know, we need to get Francis on. Yeah. So let's, yeah. if Francis, if you're listening or someone that knows Francis personally, yeah. we're going to go ahead and reach out. We want you on the show. Let's get we you on here as soon as possible. We will pivot okay. our schedules <laughs> to get you on the show. Francis Davidson, you are and we're not trying to beat and we're not trying to beat anybody up. We just we we want to know. We're interested. No, no, hundred like, percent. Yeah, this is genuine interest. Don't think I'm trying to. We're trying to beat Sonder up. Like I just got questions. Like in you know. no, it's it's a success story. Like I love yeah. success stories. Like yeah. like I I like like I just want to tap into like all these successes and get like, these couple nuggets here, couple nuggets there. Right. And like, and, and to supply them like, into the stuff that I'm doing and, and, and to let every one of our listeners, you know, grab something and be like, holy shit, what if I did that? Or what if we looked at this a little bit differently? Um, I'm speaking of like looking at things differently. Like I mm -hmm. want to kind of bring it to like, to, you know, in two weeks, um, we're, we're going to go ahead and, and have, uh, our guest on, uh, Susan Ho from Hopper. So obviously everyone knows I work at Hopper, Susan Ho, she's a revenue <laughs> leader for Hopper Homes. So she's going to come on and be on the show next week. We have an amazing guest. Can't wait to go ahead and introduce him next week. Um, Perfect. but you know, so my, I, I kind of want to talk about being able to pivot and look at things differently. When I came to Hopper, like the, like like my mind was blown because the first, you know, five years of my, my, you know, journey in this space was very vacation destination oriented. In the majority of my clients were in vacation destinations. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily short-term rental. It mm -hmm. definitely was not a, a urban focus by any means urban destinations. It was mm -hmm. a very much outer banks you know, you, you name the, the 10, the 10 vacation destinations, you know, that's where my focus, that's where 90% of the, the money that I, I made was selling to clients in those destinations. So and then when I come, yeah. when I came over to Hopper and, I, and I'm helping build like out a sales plan and, and what are we going to go ahead and do and how are we going to go ahead and do this? Like the data 
that I have to work with is different. It's totally different than ever looked at because I'm looking at flight data Mm -hmm. and where, where are flights coming in? And that's the data, you know, and where are the demographic of those, these app users, where are they booking? And, and so I encourage everyone that's listening to, to every year, every, every month, every, you know, whatever, like dive into the data, keep an eye on the data, understand where, where you're, you know, what's changing, what's changed over this year, over last year. And I know the majority of people listening do this anyways, but like I had to completely change my thought process on like, like who, who my ICP is. Like I, I had no idea like that, that it was so different. Yeah. And it is, but we're, it's the same market. We're selling the same people. They're, these are people that are the same people. They're people that are booking vacations that want right. to stay in homes, right. not that right. not stay in a hotel. And so that's, that's still. But that brings up an interesting industry division, I would say, you know, that we talk about all the time within VRMA and all these other places, you have urban versus traditional vacation rental, right? And while, again, I am a firm believer, we're all in the same boat. Um, we are also not, the, it's not the same. But at the end of the day, there's similarities that cross the boards, but how you deal with an urban market and planning for an urban market versus a traditional vacation rental market is very, very different. The traveler while at this, while the same, um, a lot of the times, right? Because people who travel to urban destinations go on vacation and go to vacation destinations and, you know, vice versa. But I think being able to really, which you go back and going back to the data, the data points that you're looking at for those demographics, right? To sell into those demographics or whatever are different. Right. Um, in terms of length of stay, in terms of accommodation type, in terms of, you know, revenue, in terms of, you know, all of those things are very, 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 very different. Um, and while there are similarities, you know, I think it's, it's another interesting conversation that we're gonna need to, in which I really wanna do is, you know, you brought up earlier, it's just, it's the data and the data you're reading and you know, where the data comes from. Like, I, that's one of the things we're definitely, uh, and I know we have some, uh, some people we're gonna get on the show from these data, data providers, because now, you know, you have options. Right. Um, you know, across the board. To, and, if, and if you're looking in, in, and again, with Hopper, like what you see with everything else, you know, when you have managers that are looking at their booking platforms, right, they're, they're looking at their market. If you're urban, you, you do want to compete more against hotels versus if I'm in Destin, I'm not really trying to compete with, you know, the Holiday Inn down the street necessarily. Right. Right. For vacation rental homes. Yes, they may be there. You know, they may be the spring breakers, you know, you know, accommodation of choice or whatever, but you're not competing with that family of six that's going down to Destin or no for you know, for two weeks during the summer or a month, you know, whenever, or snowbirds and things of that nature. Very different within well, it's it's interesting too. So like, you know, for example, you know, we had I had my, you know, I came into Hopper with where, you know, yeah. my top destinations and in, in my in where my idea what it's going to look like. And then and then when talking with our director of supply, this is this is the data we have at, at Hopper. And so mm -hmm. now, OK, where is the where are the overlays? All right, great. So now, now we kind of put that together. And it's kind of a neat mix. So the, the data we, we have, you know, so Hopper is live now, right? right. Um, on for 60% of users can go ahead and find it on their, you know, their iOS app. Mm -hmm. um, but the, what, looking at the search criteria that's coming in, it's interesting now that we have a week of data, right? Of mm -hmm. looking at the, where that search criteria, a lot aligns with both. It, right. It's not exactly what, what we thought it was going to be on what I thought it was going to be. It's not exactly what we pre preemptively thought based looking on the right. flight data. It's kind of a mix between both. Right. And it's crazy. And I, and I encourage everyone to go ahead and like get into the weeds in this, understand where, where they're looking, where you're getting, where you're getting these, how you're acquiring them. It's uh, it's just, it's mind blowing to me mm -hmm. because I never really had to dive that deep into it like previously in any of my other roles. And it's, it's fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah. Well, I think that's also, you know, the future in the space, right. Is you know, data cemented its space in our industry now more than ever because of, you know, our ability to access it. But I think, you know, the important part is, 
you know, it's also the proper analysis of that data and making sure that you are, you know, looking at things correctly. Cause you know, again, and, and I think the, the industry is getting much better uh, at this, you know, you have companies, you know, that are, are refining their approach. You have, um, them getting more familiar with markets and, and actually, you know, finding the data points that are important to those managers in that markets, whether it's, you know, giving them the ability to accurately, you know, pin comp sets to their properties. Um, you know, re- and when I say comps, I mean like actual real comps, not the kind of comps that are like, oh, well, this is kind of close, but you know, this property has a pool and your property doesn't, but it's in the same neighborhood and rents for the same. So it's like being able to really dial down right. to what makes, you know, like what makes it, it's the value, right? The better you can use that data to make a, a manager more, uh, more profitable, you know, smarter, um, and, you know, more valuable to either their portfolio or their owner. Um, then, you know, that's where the data is going to reign and whoever can do that the best is going to win, right? Like at the end of the day. So, but it's interesting, um, you know, because I also think we're just scratching the surface, like, you know, and doing things where like, you're now, you know, people that participate in Hopper, like, I don't know the, the actual product that well, but like, when you dig into that, that's valuable, right? Like knowing where travelers go based on flights. (laughs) <laughs> like that's pretty right it's pretty good you know that's pretty good forecasting data that i think you would want to have so um well speaking you know obviously we both work for uh mm-hmm. you know these listing sites here yeah. and i want to i want to give a shout out to, to reynolds united uh for a couple of things uh reynolds united uh they they always put these amazing like these like pdfs together you can go ahead and download yeah. it and the, like they're like amazing with the blogs amazing yeah. with like the data that they put together um and so and i'll we'll put a link at the uh, on the website for this there is a new link with the 12 new listing sites coming soon to reynolds united plus seven yeah. new live channels uh and the cool thing about this list is both of our companies are on it you know hopper yeah is the number one on the new channels coming soon to Reynolds United. So um, nice. we're, we're super stoked about that. And at ease is yeah, already uh, listed on yeah. RU. you. Right. So, um, you know, take a look at these. Yeah. There's some other great uh, listing sites as well. You know, kayak and hotels combined, you know, some different yep. things on there, the dirt. Um, there's just some really cool in Topia. Um, and, and are you always does a great job? They with, really do uh, with um, yeah putting kind of like there. summarizing the top PMSs. They they always put these yeah. great. It's a great resource. Like in my in my safe folder on my yeah. on on my desktop. You know, there's there's probably five or six RU you know links that I, that I use regularly. Yeah. That um you know if I want to you know what was that who was that you know they're uh, they're on top of their game with you know, with regards to that. So uh, shout out to RU and and the uh, the data they put out for uh, for ease of uh, clarification. No, but I, and so again, like that's also you know looking at you know you're looking at value that company that companies have right, right. and you know the RU team Vanessa and James and and uh, you know all of them. Um, they are, do a great job of not just, you know, what their product is, but also the PR content that goes around it, right? And putting themselves out there as, you know, a, a resource uh, of sorts in the space. And you can go back and forth about the listings or whatever, but they're doing it. You don't see, you know, kind of anyone else putting out, well, no, Rented did it. We did it at Rented for sure. Um, yeah. Where, you know, where we did content every year, we met it when we were doing, you um, when we were doing arbitrage, right? Like we, or when we were doing um, the, uh, the the listing site where we were matching owners with professional property managers. We were also, every year we did, you know, they do, and they still do the rent, like the rented report, like where are yep. the best places to buy, where are the best places to invest, you know, what markets, you know. And, you, and you're seeing more and more, more companies that are, that are putting this together, that are, that are taking right. what they do, put them a, an amazing marketing spin, and there's obviously some pioneers in this space that these other companies are replicating and, and how they do it. But, you know, yeah. imitation is, is flattery, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it's all great content, you know, well, it's, it's, and it's education, right? Like, let's yeah. be clear. Like, I think one of the things that you saw, um, one of the things I saw personally and like how this had an effect was like, with rented, we published a, a textbook on revenue management. Like that was huge, like at the time. Because, you know, there were a lot of people who needed that base level of, you know, you weren't going to read the book and you know, it was a reference guide, right? But it was a, it was really in depth. 
And it really did give you that, all right, you know, I'm not going to be a revenue manager with years of experience after reading this book, but I'm going to be a little sharper, a little dangerous, able to ask more direct questions to the, you know, the products I'm using, you know, able to question my strategy, things like that, that made my business better. That's education. Right. And that's, that's giving away. Right. And so, you know, with, of course, with the expectation of drawing people to you, right. For, you know, as, you know, because the point is, you know, what do, what can you do in this spin? How can you communicate to make yourself the, you know, go-to point for, or the go-to, you know, or the go-to person or company or the go-to strategic advantage for whatever product you have? Or Well, or- I mean, every time someone goes ahead and looks at an, at an RU you know, or whatever, mm-hmm. whoever's putting this, this material out, it's that, you know, they, they know who's putting it together and they're like, Oh, they, they, yeah. they know their shit. You know, we, maybe we should go ahead and cons- re, you know, consider going ahead and listing, or maybe we should consider going ahead and u- utilizing their services or taking yeah. it, you know, they've been putting out this great content for a long time. Now, why not go ahead and, and, and take that next step. And obviously that's, that's yeah. a drive behind, you know, the, the teams that are doing it, um, you know, on top of just being all around good people. Um, speaking around, uh, speaking about uh, all around good people, Next week, super solid guest. Yeah. Not only super solid guest, but also our um, new sponsor. Um, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that. Um, we're excited to go ahead and and uh, kind of bring that to to the forefront next week. Um, super super awesome guest. And um, you got anything else, man? You want to wrap today up with? I, I mean, I, I think there are some other as we're looking kind of forward to like cool things that are coming this this uh, this year. Um, you know. I, I think we're going to see more kind of fun and creative cl- collaborations. Um, you know, we got the shorties coming up and, right. and you know, with what Will and Damon are doing um, with the Destin Air Awards. I think that's going to be good. Yeah, the book direct show in Miami. Oh, yeah. Wee. But, but, but all and the awards that they're giving out to. Yeah. Like, I think it's, it's really good to see, you know, kind of this, uh, you know, uh, these things spring up in new and creative partnerships. Um, that you know i think are good and healthy for the industry and so yeah we'll definitely what about the nfts are we are we getting one i we can do we can definitely do some nfts ours will be super fly though like all right all right i'm gonna gonna let you run with that as i I (laughs) actually i have have some really as i have some good ideas i think we can make a couple million off these nfts john so there we go uh, well shit. that's our goal that's gonna be our goal that's all right yeah let us know Let us know if you want to see these, these beautiful faces on NFTs. Um, and, uh, we're man, again, we love what we do. We, we love putting this content out. We have some great, great guests lined up. Mm-hmm. We have like, it's amazing. Like shit, we're coming up to our first year anniversary in April. So it's coming, it's right around the corner here. We've been doing this for almost a year now. <laughs> um, we're so check in if you're if you're liking um if you like our podcast please go ahead and review. go to apple Podcasts, leave us a review go to spotify leave us a review tell us what's up share with yeah. your friends um you know huge shout out to uh hospitality.fm uh yeah. love being part of the family there and uh yeah until next week everybody all right have a great week